So now let us see that the link between the evolution and classification. So we studied how the traits are inherited and how the variations that help for the formation of a species, speciation. So we understood the various situations and conditions which lead to formation of a new species. So sometimes it happens because of the natural selection. That means the variations that are helpful for the organism to adapt according to the change in the environment. So it leads to the survival of the organisms. And sometimes accidentally, maybe accidentally certain organisms may be isolated or which may join with some other group and continue their progeny there. So after a long period, if it is brought back to its original group, it may not be able to reproduce with the original members. It shows that the variations accumulated a lot and it has got difference. So by that it cannot reproduce with the previous group. So you can consider it as a new species. So those points we discussed here. Now let us see to understand the process of evolution. How do we understand? Yes. Okay. We are thinking that this much of variety has come from that means this much of diversity of living organisms have come from the same group of ancestors. So in fact, we all might have all this diversity might have come from the single ancestor. But here we understood the conditions from generation to generation because of so many reasons the organisms get divided, get isolated and get accumulated with so many variations some helpful variations, some useful, some useless. So likewise species are developed. So to study that evolution here, what helps us to study the evolution better? We need to look at the classification of the organisms. That means the grouping of organisms. So the grouping helps us to understand better. So individually, if you study each and every organism, you cannot understand anything about the organism. You have to study about each and every organism. How is its digestion? How is its, uh, how are its systems? So what are the tissues? How it is doing this activity, this life process carried likewise. It is not possible to study each and every organism living on this planet. So organisms are studied under one groups. They are studied under groups. How they are grouped? That grouping is called as classification. So organisms are grouped according to so many characteristics they show, features they show. The organisms that have similar characters are grouped into one group. This grouping or classification also helps us to understand the process of evolution. So you can understand, understand the process of evolution if you study the members of one group. And if you study the members of two different groups which are similar. There are two groups, but they have some similarities. Their differences are less. That means close groups. By studying these close groups, you can understand. So here the classification helps, but how the organisms are classified? I told you based upon the characteristics. So, so many characteristics on basing various features, the organisms are classified or grouped. So let us see. Primarily, the organisms are classified depending upon their cell structure. We know that all living organisms are made up of cells. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. So, the cell structure is different between certain organisms. Some organisms, they do not have a nucleus, enucleated organisms, prokaryotes. Some organisms, they have a well-developed nucleus in which the genetic material is present. Whereas the other group, genetic material is present, but it is not in the nucleus. The cell does not contain any nucleus. The genetic material is present in the cytoplasm. So there is a division. The organisms that do not possess a nucleus in their cells, the organisms that have a distinct nucleus, prokaryotes, eukaryotes. Again, there is a categorization or classification based on number of cells, unicellular, multicellular, 
only one cell throughout the life many cells and again one more characteristic food related photosynthesis even though they are multicellular all organisms are not capable of producing their own food organisms especially plants especially green plants are able to prepare their own food by a process known as photosynthesis in which they use carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose all organisms are not capable of doing the photosynthesis animals they cannot carry out photosynthesis plants and even the plants the plants that have green color leaves or green color pods are able to produce the food by photosynthesis so on basing this characteristic whether the organism is able to carry out photosynthesis or not based on this also the categorization is done the classification is done and on the other hand if you come to the animals the complexity of the body even though they are multicellular the complexity of the body again they are classified so there we can find basically they are divided based upon the structures of their skeletons organisms that have a skeleton again with with skeleton without skeleton and the organisms that are having skeleton outside the body exoskeleton exoskeleton example cockroach prawns all insects endoskeleton endo in the sense inside what inside inside the body we have an endoskeleton humans have endoskeleton our skeleton our bones are under the muscles so we don't have any shell outside the body like a cockroach so insects they have hard skeleton outside their body you you call it as exoskeleton but animals like dogs cat humans all mammals you see that they have endoskeleton so on basing this also you can divide the categorize so on basing all these characters the grouping of organisms is done so once you study the grouping of organisms you can understand the relation similarities between different groups so by that you can understand they are closely related you see that there are two groups say for example i will take mammals and uh, we take birds mammals and birds so here you can find some similarities but there are differences but these two are entirely different from insects see here three groups i have written mammals that means that have skin on their bodies that produce young ones directly by giving birth dog cat humans all these are mammals birds you know pigeon parrot crow all these are birds insects you know if we talk about these three groups you find more similarities between these two compared to this compared to that you have skeleton inside your body endoskeleton in mammals even in birds endoskeleton is there blood is red in color in mammals blood is red in color in birds so likewise you have some similarities four limbs you have two hands two legs and birds they have two wings two legs four limbs are there so you are finding similarities of course they are different groups because of so many differences but birds are somewhat closely related to mammals compared to insects and if you compare with some other group like some plants you are comparing with some plants can you compare these mammals and plants lot of variations so some groups are very closely related some groups are not so closely related they have so many differences but this grouping helps it helps to understand the hierarchy we can go backwards means starting with the groups that have close relations then you will find that by this you can understand okay mammals and birds they have so many similarities they are close it it shows that both these things have a common ancestor both these things have come from a common ancestor so you have gone to their common ancestor and there you studied the relation 
So finally, you will go to a point at which everything has evolved from a common ancestor. So from where this common ancestor has come onto this planet? So there arises a question how the life began on this planet. No one knows how life began on this planet. It's all history. So there are certain predictions and there are certain experiments conducted to show that life might have started on this planet that is in the ocean because of some atmospheric changes. Some unnatural climatic conditions led to formation of some molecules in the water which led to the formation of molecules like proteins, DNA. So all these together they formed a, a, a single cell, some living constituent which later evolved into this much of diversity. It gives. So we have to believe that. So as we are going through this process of evolution, we are looking into this process of evolution. evolution. So we understood that, we understand that. So the evolution this much of diversity, all these species have come from the common ancestors. But it is a very gradual and slow process which takes thousands and thousands and thousands of years, millions of years it takes.